Well, howdy, folks. Welcome to episode 35 of Do Not Worry. I'm your host, Anthony, coming to you once again from the heart of Beirut and Jaite. We're joined once again by my lovely interns, Noor. I heard you guys. And Elijah. Wave hello, interns. You guys had a good week. How was your first experience on last week's episode? You guys have a good time? Yeah, it was amazing. It was Thank you for great. your lovely comments. The comments were amazing. Thank you. And I think we became a meme. We did. It's great. <laughs> you did become a meme. And seriously, thank you to everyone. You guys uh, gave the interns a very warm reception. I, my heart was warmed reading those comments. So thank you very much. Folks, if you guys, if you guys are wondering what kind of episode we have in store for you guys today, well think no further we are going to be giving you guys a quick daddy foodie update the foodie wars are heating up folks the foodie wars are heating up uh, we're going to be talking about a topic that i think none of us want to talk about which is the llama old man dog situation uh really like a very we have to talk about it because everyone was talking about it and it blew up it is the last topic i want to talk about it's what i like to call a landmine this topic and it's your first landmine to experience with me so we'll have some fun going over that it was Jat hadid's birthday was it over the weekend or last week we're going to look at that really quickly the interns are bringing us some cool segments about uh dr food uh, some 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 cool Dr. Food stuff. We're going to talk about Squid Game, folks, the TV show that the whole world has been watching. It's number one in Lebanon. It's number one all over the world. We're going to give you guys our opinions on Squid Game. Uh, but before we get into any of that, please take a second to like this video, leave a comment, your engagement. Hashtag engagement. Rudolph, I'm still going with it for you, my man, okay? Uh, so leave a comment. Your engagement does a lot to help this video. It helps our videos get, get recommended, appear on the homepage, all that sort of thing. Uh, and please take a second to consider supporting me and my lovely interns on Patreon, folks. Your money goes directly to help cover uh, the interns' salaries, uh, and it'll help me fund my Joseph Shada documentary, which I will be shooting later this month. So uh, that is going to be a lot of fun. And speaking of Patreon, let me thank a couple of, of patrons and uh, some, some new, new family members to our Patreon family. Uh, people like Georgina M., Paul Lynch, welcome, Paul Lynch and Georgina. How about Joe Huri? Joe, thank you for joining. Gino Raide, folks, the one and only Gino Raide, that's controversial, is now a blonde patron on Do Not Worry. Gino, I salute you, sir. Thank you for your patronage. And one of my favorite YouTubers around, Jad Venture. I just got the notification today. Jad Venture is a patron of the show. What about superhero patrons? The ones that are really dropping some heavy cash to support this show and support my interns. Superhero patrons like Joseph Nasser. Joseph, thank you so much for supporting the show. Uh, Newell's brother, coincidentally, Newell's brother is giving me money to pay his sister. So however you guys want to take that, that's happening. Uh, Eli Tawil, thank you so much. Eli Fadi Muerzil, thank you for your support. And Jana Burislan, thank you so much. Also, guys, we have like a number of patrons who have chosen to remain anonymous, who have asked me not to mention their names or include their names in the credits. Thank you guys so much. Your support does not go unnoticed. Even though I'm not giving you credit, uh, I see you. I appreciate you. Thank you so much. Uh, that's enough babbling on my end. Let us get into the show. All right, folks, to start things off, uh, just I want to give you guys an update on the foodie wars. As you guys know, I've been trying to get Daddy Foodie to come out of retirement for the past like two weeks. I got in trouble with a lot of you guys because I revealed some DMs that No Garlic, No Onions had sent me a few years ago to try and get, you know, to try and light a fire under Daddy Foodie's ass. I honestly thought I had to go extreme. I had to go to extreme lengths to to get Daddy Foodie back. We we did a whole. I did a whole. I found a bunch of before and after plastic surgery pictures. Um, Daddy Foodie has. Take a notice, folks, and it looks like Daddy Foodie might be coming back. So we got some good news over um, over the past couple of days. Check this out. Here's a photo of Daddy Foodie and Hostel Kitchen, which I'm, he's a he's a chef uh, with a caption. Yes, he's alive and he'll be back at Daddy Foodie. Now, I was a little upset and offended at the post because there was a bunch of comments being like, thank you, Hostel Kitchen. You brought him back. I was like, whoa, 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 whoa. Listen up here, folks. If anybody's responsible for bringing daddy back, it's me. All right, I've been doing this shit for three weeks. I've been getting in trouble. I've been, I've got, I'm blocked by no garlic, no onions now. Nobody trusts me anymore. So that I can get daddy foodie back. And then he comes back and then people start thanking Hostel Kitchen. No offense, Hostel Kitchen. You look like you're a very talented chef. There's some cool shit on your page, my man. But uh, ease up, folks. And to prove it to you that it was me all along, okay, I even, I shared... 
I shared this, I shared the photo on my Instagram. I was like, you're welcome, folks. You're welcome. And I get a response from Daddy Foodie. He tells me, I hear your calls, bro, loud and clear with a heart. And obviously, I respond by sending Daddy some peaches, some sexy peaches, baby, because Daddy Foodie loves his ass. So uh, Daddy knows what's up. And there was this comment when I, when I had uploaded a, a clip of me calling Daddy Foodie back. There was this hilarious comment that Yasmin uh, Abdel Jabir wrote. She's like, the before and after plastic surgery photos are the bat signal for Daddy Foodie. Daddy Foodie liked her comment. And there was another comment on one of my posts that says, the biggest douche, Daddy Foodie, please save us. I write, I hope he's listening. Daddy Foodie responds by saying, always listening, baby. Fuck yeah. Daddy Foodie's coming back, baby. We're gonna have a face-off. Daddy Foodie versus Dr. Food. Place your bets. And turns who? In the battle between Daddy Foodie and Dr. Food, who do you guys support? Who are you placing your bets on once this battle royale begins? I honestly think Dr. Food would win. I like uh, Daddy Foodie. I can't deny it. Noor wins this round. Do Not Worry is a Daddy Foodie podcast. Okay, here we support Daddy Foodie. Elijah, you lose points for choosing Dr. Food. While I agree with you, Dr. Food is the more violent man. If they were to get into like a physical brawl, I think, you know, Dr. Food is gonna... But like here, at this point, believe it or not, Daddy Foodie's the class of your foodie. Like it's going back to, to the basics. Anyways, we can't wait to see what's gonna happen. Uh, no garlic, no onion. If, you got, if you're a man... You can step back into the ring and unblock me. Hmm? Anyways, that's just a little update I wanted to give you guys. Daddy, we're waiting for you. I can't wait to see what kind of content, hmm, tasty, cringy content you drop. And uh, let's, get, let's get the foodie wars going, baby. You're welcome, everybody. You're welcome. And everyone was complaining about no garlic, no onions, I told you I had a plan. And it is coming to fruition. All right, this, is, this, this topic is one that I, on the show, like to call a landmine. Okay, a landmine interns, welcome to your first landmine topic. It's a topic that I really usually don't want to talk about, and every step I take, I feel like I'm going to step on a mine that's going to explode in my face, okay? I know Raid, I know Lama, I don't really want to talk about people that I know. I try to do it as, uh, you know, as little as I can, you know, try to avoid it, but he got himself in a massive controversy. You all know the story. Tons of you reached out to me uh, asking me to talk about it, or you wanted my take. I hesitated as to whether or not to talk about it, but I figured... Why is this show around if not to tackle difficult topics that no one wants to talk about? So before we get into anything, we're going to watch the video. The, the full video is on Raid's Instagram page. It is over nine minutes long. So I suggest if you want to watch this and get the full context, watch the full nine minute clip. And I cut it down to like five minutes just for the sake of the show. So we're going to watch five minutes of uh, it's got the greatest hits yeah, of the moment, literally. Um, and... Uh, We'll watch it, then I'm going to give you guys what I think about the situation, and then the intern's going to tell you guys what they think. So let's start by watching this clip. Malin, so all. I'm not always clear. 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 I'm not always وحامل هالبارودة. فكرني يعني عن لفتة فكرني ما أطوم الشجرة. شو؟ فكرني ما أطوم الشجرة يعني. زي ما حرام حرام خز ما لبسينا. إذا بتأوصو هذا الكلب هلا إذا حتأوصو. سلمني على جميع الرف. هل يرف أو لبسينا مش بس بالكلي. بسينته بسينته كلب. لا ما بسين ما بتعمل شيء الكلب كلب بخزاء خزاء تغزي أتعلم ست بسينا. I'm 
بيهجموا على العالم حبيبي تعرف شو؟ تعرف شو؟ تعرف شو؟ بيهجموا اعطيني اعطيني باروتك خلينا اوصل خلينا اسمع صوتك انا هدول بعدوا بشر My, my cousins live right in that neighborhood. So that, that building right there. I know this neighborhood very well. يا اخي اخر هم الضياع يا اخي انت انت راسك شو تنزل مع بارود نص الطريق تقوي سكليب بعدين عم تحط النسام يا اخي اخر هم البلديه هلا عم تحط النسام يعني ما ما حدا بده اياها لك معلم كل الدنيا ما حدا بده اياها عندك دقيقه على القد لا 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 ترجع على البيت لا 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 دقيقه عندك دقيقه ترجع على البيت او بقصتك البارود وبرجعك على البيت انا This is where I think it's starting to kind of lose control the situation. يلا عبيتك مع باروتك يلا لحقك للبيت يلا شيء انت بك شيء نازل مع باروتك عم عم بتقوي سكليب نص الطريق يلا بتقوصه هناك بين عالم الصبح لا ما في وين بتحت السيارة في عالم طب ليش عم تقوصه انت يا خي انت عم تقوصه تقوص الكلب يا خي ما بدي لا حدا بيجي بياخده ما وين بس وين في وين في البرود من هناك انت طيب خلص هذا شيله Here, I think the guy ceased to become a threat. حتستلم انت حتستلم حيو انت انت ما خسرت انت ما تتعاطى هو عم بيقوي سكليب شو خصك انت؟ لك ايه بس انا عم حل المشكلة حبي عم بتحل حبي حبي ما بتنحل لانه هذا الزلمه المفتول اذا بده ينزل بباروته كل يوم يقوي سكليب بده يتحاسب في قانون بيحاسبه وخلصت صار لي 30 سنه موقف ما لوك اير فيكو ب 30 سنه تبعك روح غير ثيابك روح غير ثيابك تنزل على المخفر يلا نهاتك خلصني روح تروح ما لا غير خلصني يلا يلا سو Look, this is a complicated story. I wish there was like, uh, I wish I could be like, he's totally wrong or he's totally right. He's not. I think it's more nuanced than, than I think a lot of people think. If you read some of the comments on his Instagram, um, they're usually pretty extreme. It's either they think like you fucked up. What the fuck is this? Or people are like fully in staunch support. And you have like a couple of people who are like, they, they kind of agree and disagree. And Nuh Hajar had, a, can you find me the comments that Nuh Hajar wrote on, on that post? It was on this post particularly. What do I think about this? I think, I'm going to give Raid some credit here. I think it takes a lot of balls and it takes a lot of guts to walk up to a guy who's carrying a gun and who's shooting dogs, you know? Uh, whether the guy is old or young, it takes balls to walk up to someone. It takes courage to see someone carrying a gun and be like, I'm going to stand up to this guy and I'm going to tell him to stop doing what he's doing. Raid at that point had no idea if this guy was stable or not, if this guy could turn his gun onto Raid. So... Definitely, I want to give Raid some credit. You know, not, not everyone would have done this. Not everyone would have walked up to a person and, and confronted them about, about what they were doing. I probably wouldn't have even have done it. I would have just been like, you know what, I don't even want to fucking deal with this. And I would have walked away maybe. Who knows? So definitely, 
Um, there is value in knowing that there's someone who's willing to stand up to someone like this. But I think that Raid started out with good intentions. He, he saw someone shooting dogs in his neighborhood. He's like, fuck this. But the situation really escalated to a point where it didn't need to escalate, where by the end of it, he managed to make me feel bad for the guy who was shooting dogs. And I would never thought I would say that, like, fuck this old man. No offense. Fuck him. Okay, a guy who's shooting dogs in the streets, who doesn't see what's wrong with it. Fuck him. Hala, obviously, he doesn't seem like he's all there. I think clearly while Raid was talking to him, he could have determined that this guy isn't all there mentally. What Raid should have done, in my opinion, is he did the right thing at first. He approached the guy. What are you doing? Clearly, something's off with the guy. Raid should have then de-escalated, sort of walked away and called the, the proper authorities to, to deal with the situation. Raid wasn't equipped to deal with this. And then like this random dude with a wife beater shows up and helps him take the guy's gun away. Like the point, the part where they're, they're attacking the guy and they're grabbing his gun. He had already been like, dude, I'm going to go home. Khalas, I get it. He wasn't a threat to anyone. Yet that's when they decided to like take the gun from him, which one of them could have been shot by accident. The old man could have been shot by accident. Like they, they created a harmful situation and a dangerous situation where there was none. Obviously the guy's walking around with a gun. But they escalated and they made it worse, to be honest with you. Raid could have gotten hurt. The old man could have, and the old man did get hurt. And like Raid clearly cut out the part where the old dude got hurt in the video. Like this is honestly like incriminating evidence against Raid. Like why would you even post this? Like I don't know, like the whole part where they're they're trying to take the gun from the guy. He's clearly overpowered. Dombi Sabu. And then you see him with blood coming, coming like on his face and his neck. There's a mark on his neck. There's a mark on his head. His lips are red. There's blood on his shirt. He looks confused and in shock. At that point, any goodwill I had towards Raid was kind of lost. And you just focus on the negative and you're just kind of shocked that they would do this to an old man. I know he's shooting dogs and fuck him, but the situation was very mishandled. And my second question is, why the fuck would anyone post this on Instagram? Like, who wants to watch this? Like, I was watching this halfway through. I'm like, why the fuck am I watching this? Like, why is this on Instagram? Why is this a story? Like, I get Raid filming it to protect himself in case the guy tries to hurt Raid and then he needs evidence to show it to the police or something. But to just post it on Instagram as if it's something to be... Like, you should be proud of maybe the first third of this video. But at some point, man, it's... I don't know. I, I had a hard time watching this. And like I, like I said, fuck this old guy. I love animals like eat, and I love cats. And this guy is like, he's like, yeah, they're eating cats. You still don't fucking shoot dogs, even if, even if they're eating cats. It's the circle of life. It's not up to you to go down to a family neighborhood in a residential area and shoot animals. It's a complicated situation. I want to give Raid some credit. Did you find those comments that Noor had? So Noor had something hilarious. One of them was um, good content for engagement, which I found hilarious. Like, yeah, that is such weird content to have on your Instagram page for engagement. And then he Noor wrote, loving the comments of what you did is amazing, but you shouldn't hit him. And no fee adjectives less than amazing. And if it amazes the mind, but you shouldn't hit him. Amazing escalope, but my pesel khara goes well with the chicken. In a nutshell, that is kind of how I feel. Uh, it's a complicated story. Again, Ray did some things right. He showed a lot of courage. Um, and I want to give him credit for that. But he also overstepped. He also should have known when to back away, when to let the proper authorities handle the situation. Um, at the end of it, man, it's, it's you're on video beating up an old man. And that is not a good look for anyone, dude. And I don't know. All right, I said my piece. I might think of something else in a second. But interns, what do you guys think of the situation? Uh... Kamen, I think uh, he did good going after him, but it could have been handled way differently, way better. Oh, the fact that you know, he cut out the beating part, it's really sus. And it doesn't uh, not on his side. Yeah, the entire video is like stupid. Why is it even on Instagram? He could just keep it on his phone like you mentioned and just tell the police. No need to post this or raise awareness about this since it's dealt with fire. The problem is like it just ended up, it doesn't make anyone look good. It doesn't do anything to, to move the conversation forward. Like it may be, if anything, it's, it's like what not to do. 
it's like it shows you how not to deal with the situation. I mentioned, I, I posed this question on my Patreon to my patrons, like, what do you guys think of the situation? And I got a lot of passionate responses, people that were very pro what Ray did, people that were very against it. But most people seem to agree that he may have started off well, but he fucked it up at the end. Like definitely no, most people weren't in agreement that what happened at the end and like beating up the old man was the right move. And some of the comments, Raid is like, we don't know how he got hurt. Uh, I'm sorry, but that's bullshit. Uh, clearly it's on camera and then it was cut out. So, um, and, and Raid, man, you could have hurt yourself, man. Trying to, trying to grab a gun out of a guy's hand, you could have shot yourself. And the dude wasn't gonna use it at that point. He was clearly no longer a threat. When he was no longer a threat, you guys moved in with the physical violence. I don't know, man. One day after posting that video, Raid posted like a, an update on his Instagram. Here, here is that. اليوم الصبح رحت لحتى اطمن على العم ولا اعطيكم ابديت على اللي صار امبارح انه هو طلع من المخفر اشرطوا البروده which is step 1 اعطوه مهله 10 ايام probation period المحضر مفتوح في حال رجع عمل كرر نفس الشيء بيتحاكموا بفوت على الحبس وزياده عن هيك تواصلت مع بو ان جي او وعرضت عليهم الفكره انه تو اوفر هيم سايكولوجيكال هيلب نساعده وهن بما انه بيروحوا للقصص للاخر من بعد اللي صار امبارح قبله واذا هو بيريد فينا نقدم له مساعده من قبل بروفيشنال سايكولوجيست يقعدوا معه ويحكوا معه ونساعده لاخر الطريق هيدا هي كل الخبريه والعمى So that was his update he got a lot of shit for this because uh, I mean he didn't address the fact that like the, the guy got beat or you know he didn't mention anything that happened to the guy physically uh, like Noor mentioned earlier it's kind of sus like that part in the video where he's they just cut it out and then the guy is all bloody and shit so clearly something went down uh, people weren't satisfied with this if I were right I would just delete the, the whole fucking thing from my profile to be honest with you you're on camera beating up an old dude ultimately and I know the guy was shooting dogs I know he was an asshole I do believe that Raid started out with good intentions but at the end of the day it's like it's it's not a good look man it's not a good look for anyone involved so that's that those are those are my thoughts on this landmine of a story Jad Hadid uh, as you guys know Jad Hadid has blocked me ever since I uh, talked about him on on this show well Jad celebrated his birthday uh, Elijah found this out by doing some research thank you Elijah this is why I love having interns folks for for shit like this uh, I can't see any of his stories anymore again since I'm blocked. So let's react to some cringe Jad Hadid birthday videos. Um, honestly, I don't know from where to start what to say. Because um, no matter what I say, it will never be enough to express how I feel and how grateful I am. Thank you so much for all your beautiful messages and overwhelming wishes. It made my day, to be honest. And um, the cherry on top <laughs> was Katalea's video, singing happy birthday. This made my whole year. Thank you so much, Ramona. I'm proud of all my heart and I'm proud of all my عندي عالم بعاده بحياتي وعندي بنتي بتسفر الدنيا كلها سو شو بدي اكثر من هيك ذاتس وات اي كول ا هابي بيرثدي ذات واز ويل سيد سربرايزنجلي ذات واز ما لازم تقطع بلا ما اشرب كاسكم وكاس اصحابي اللي معي انا فلت ذا كاميرا شو يو اراوند ايفريبادي از غونا سي هاي So you know he barely drank. I'm gonna tell you guys a funny story. What a narc, bro! Like you're in Dubai. If, if, if like someone takes this seriously, your friend Mahmoud's going to fucking prison, bro. Stop narking on your friends. Okay. So I think I know this Oliver guy. I think I went to high school with him. Thank you so much for being with me, everybody. 
Okay, so quick fun fact. So Jad Hadid, once someone told me, uh, he was invited to a like a liquor launch party a few years ago. If, I don't know if it was like gin or vodka, some kind of brand was doing a launch event. And they invited Jad Hadid as an influencer to promote the brand. So he shows up there, someone offers him a drink. And he's like, you guys actually think I drink that? Then he lifts his shirt, shows them his abs. He's like, how else am I going to take care of these puppies? Something like that. I don't know if he said, how else am I going to take care of these puppies? But like he, he turned down the drink, lifted his shirt. And I was like, how else am I going to have these fucking abs? So this is why he's barely drinking. He's like, Ugh. he's going to go home and like make himself throw up or some shit to maintain the abs. Have you noticed that he turned the feature to reply because of you? I don't think that that might not have been me. That might have been Tahanik. Because Tahanik totally made fun of the fact that he wasn't, uh, he didn't let people reply. But yeah, now, as if he's going to read our replies. Kifkun, guys, how's your day? As if he's going to fucking read it. Anyways, now this is pretty funny. Is, was this related to his birthday? Uh, it was after his birthday. Sabaho. Sabaho. Uh. 2.30. It's okay, it's okay. It's okay. What's gonna happen? Nothing, nothing, absolutely nothing. I'm telling you, take it and go. Don't be ripping off Russell Peters, bro. Happy Sunday, you guys. How's it going for you? Are you having fun? Great, I'm yeah. having a great day. Bring yourself. Hello. مع اللي بتحبون مع اصحابكم مع اهلكم مع كل شخص مشتاقين له انا اليوم جاءت جيت على ابو ظبي dude all these empty platitudes i hope you're having a good day you're spending it with the people you love that that's the only like who Obviously, bro, if I'm spending time with the people I love, I'm gonna have a good day. Like, who? Thank you. I don't even know what the fuck to say. Such a, the Indian accent, dude, like that's so fucking racist and like the like, Russell Peters is Indian, you know what I mean? You're not Indian. And there's a lot of Indian people who work in, like, Dubai, right? And, like, under horrible conditions, they're paid horrible wages. No offense to, to people from Dubai. But, like, y'all should pay your immigrants a little bit more, man. Uh, yeah, that's Jad Hadid. What, you guys, you guys fans of Jad Hadid? <laughs> the guy's a douche. No. I, mean. I have no words. Okay, this next segment, I have tasked my interns into looking into this character called Sherbil Abu Khattar, C A, known as C A K, or as I like to call him, CAC. CAC. He is a, a fitness trainer. He's got all sorts of businesses like CAC Gym, CAC Supplements, CAC Kitchen. I had seen a couple of his videos before. They seemed cringe. I sent him to my interns. I'm like, please look into this man. Is he cringe? Interns, what did you find? Who is CAC? Tell us a little bit more. Ladies Go first. Ahead. <laughs> okay, fine. So basically, CAK is a very cringe ass guy, but he seems very genuine and sweet. Like he's passionate about what he does and he seems very successful. It's kind of a show off, but you can't not like this guy if you check out his content. So I I agree. He's he seems like a great guy, but I don't agree with his ways. <laughs> What's funny is that you guys also, uh, you, you've spotted some, some beef between Dr. Food and CAC. So we have some Dr. Food versus CAC. We, all, we love talking Dr. Food here on the podcast. He's a, he's a piece of shit, but like he's, he's our piece of shit. Here is Mr. CAC talking about masturbation. I've not seen this. This is again sent by the interns. العادي السرية العادي السرية إشارة إنه هرموناتنا كتير قوية يمكن وما عم نقدر نفضيها بقى التمرين رح يساعدنا نتخلص أول شيء من هالعادة السرية تاني شيء العادة السرية ما لنا مضرة إذا ما عملناها فوق الزوم يعني كمان شباب ما زيدوا كتير وصبايا ما زيدوا كتير خلوها ضمن المنطق ضمن المعقول وفينا نستعملها تنام نوم هني لأنه مجرد ما مرتنا العادة السرية قبل النوم ممكن نريح اعصابنا وننام نوم هني وانا بفضل بالمستقبل نتخلص من كل هالعادات ونلتجئ لحياه صحيه ذهنيا وجسديا اكثر واكثر نتخلص من الامور المقله عازه على المدى الطويل تاك لك شير كومنت ان انجوي يور داي سي سو ويت اتس كول اتس كول وات از ات كولد ان اربيك العاده السريه از ذات ريلي وات ماستربيشن از كولد دو اي جست ليرن سمثينج ثانك يو كاك he seemed pretty open about it. I liked that he even mentioned the ladies because ma like women masturbating is such a taboo thing here in Lebanon. So I'm glad he's 
respect. I like I like this guy. I like this guy. Let's see some more. Here's him fat shaming a girl. So I guess we're gonna like him a little bit less. Uh, but let's see. Let's see if it is fat shaming. Maybe maybe he has a point. Let's see what Kak has to say. هلا بتقول له سي اي كي ما لك ما اتركها تاكل اذا اذا قلته هيك بتكونوا بتكرهوا للبنت لانه اذا حدا شايف هيك غلط وعم يسكت عنه فهيدي جريمه انجوي يور داي سي اي هلا ذا فيديوز ذات از تشوزينغ اوف هير ارنت ذا موست فلاترينغ يعني شي از جست ايتينغ ستف كايند اوف سلوبلي ام جيسينغ شي از دوينغ ات اون بيربوس فور تيك توك اند ستف I don't know if this is fat shaming. I mean, he's he's warning her that her lifestyle is unsustainable, which hey, it's true. Look, it's when we see when you see a person smoking, we don't hesitate and be like, "Stop, put down the cigarette. It's bad for your health." Well, if you see a, a morbidly obese per- person pounding fucking uh, cheeseburgers, maybe we have to we should be like, "Hey, maybe put down the cheeseburger." Kind of like we tell someone to put down the cigarettes. Next video. He's with his like wife or his girlfriend here. Do you guys know if he's married? Yeah, he's, he's married, married and this is his romancia. Okay, I love that. Why is he always wearing like a a really tight like eye shirt? Like isn't he I don't know where the fuck they are. Maybe they were doing like a workout on this mountain or something, but like she seems like she's dressed to like impress. He's just wearing his gym his gym clothes. By the way, something I, I was doing a little bit of digging on him too. He did he has like a very inspiring before and after like transformation. He used to be overweight, so uh, this guy has like a very interesting story. Now, this is pretty cringe. Now, this is some this is a sport that I generally find cringe. I don't even know if it's a sport. It's what is it called? Bodybuilding. It's just when men pose. It's like what uh, what Arnold Schwarzenegger used to do back in the day, Lou Ferrigno, all these Mr. World champions that just work out and pose and show the glutes. This is him kind of coaching Uh, an athlete and sort of telling him how to pose. This is originally a six-minute video that I've cut down into two minutes. Noor, this one's for you. Enjoy. A live broadcast from uh, CAK Gym, Jnah, and the professor is here. Coach Marco, by the way, the professor, uh, Coach Marco is three weeks out from the German Championship. He will be in Lebanon, the Dual Arab League, the Dual بال natural bodybuilding international natural bodybuilding عم يعطينا ابديت صغيره عم نعطيكم ابديت صغيره سايد quarter turn to the right ماركو باي ذا واي بليز دونت كم كيل مي سيمتري راوند صار فيكم تقشعوا الجلوتس عم تقطع عم يبينوا الكاتس بالجلوتس لوك ات ذم جلوتس ماركو quarter turn to the right شعل باك الباك بوز كوتش ماركو باي ذا واي ذا بروفيسور Quarter turn to the right. You can see the back, the kill fibers of the back. The quarter turn, like the glutes, keep them at the side. Shall I go to camera? The telephone, I'm going to ask you. I'm going to download HD. And quarter download turn HD. to the right. So now the front, hella. And the front, double biceps. The front, double biceps. Check this out. Check It's so weird to me because, like. Working out and lifting heavy weights is like such a macho thing. This is like the complete opposite of that, I find. Left to right, both are amazing sides. What? And side chest. Side chest. You know, like this is. Yes, 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 yes. And again, I'm not the, 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 the authority on who's macho and not. Okay, I'm in horrible shape. Turn your back to the judges. And Check the this. back double biceps. Check the back I, double biceps. I, I zoomed in for you specially. Hamstrings, glutes. Why are you grabbing your ass like that, man? Boom. This is just disturbing. Boom. And back. Double Marco Bedawip, Professor Nahna Mark. Check the abdominals and thighs. I like to show the abdominals and thighs. Quads and thighs. Quads and abs, actually. Abdominals and thighs. Leg, 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 leg. Boom, 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 boom. Abdominals and thighs. ما بنقشع غير شقف عضل طالع من وين ما كان اند كوادز 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 هاندز اون هيبس عم تكون هاندز اون هيبس موست ماسكولر كوادز شوي نحب وحده فرونت يس بيوتيفول اند ذيس از تو ماسكولر برو ذيس از تو ماتش مان واو واو And like, he's getting turned on by this or some shit man like relax cack relax man okay uh, now here's the fun stuff Dr. Food versus cack I'm going to go to the CAK I'm going to go to the CAK 
Așa că și mă vreau pe ce mă arată pe viteza la social media. Și arată. Okay, so Dr. Food is not impressed by the packaging. Part 2 of Dr. Food on CAC. So he's not impressed at all. Dr. Food is not enjoying. So Dr. Food gave CAK CAC a 5 out of 10, but then to give us, to bless us with some beautiful content, CAC responded to Dr. Food. And here is CAC, who I think kind of looks like Dr. Food, just as much more fit and like handsome and like, you know, we're fans of CAC here. We're fans of CAC. We support you. I like this guy. So let's, let's watch him. Dr. Food evaluating CAC Dr. Food, ya jamea ma'arif al farq bain al pam spray with zit. قال انه البطاطا ملين زيت البان فري زيرو كالوريز والزيت ملين كالوريز ما عرف الفرق حتى ودكتور فود قال انه العنق تبع الخضرة هيدا شي مش مصبوط بينما العنق ملين فايبرز والفايبرز اساسي للهضم بالمعدة انتو قلوا لي داون بلو اذا هو دكتور ولا لا انجو يور داي سي I meant I like this guy's positivity I like his energy he just seems like a nice guy عم تعملوا لي فيديوز وتاجز عن هالزلمة بدأت مشغل هالزلمة ما نغير له اسمه ما نبطل نسميه دكتور فود لازم يكون دكتور جونج فود لأنه إذا كمل هيك رح يصير كرشه قدام وأنا بفضل يأكل أكل سي كيتشن لو بارد لصحته على المدى الطويل لأنه هالطريق منا سليمة أبدا 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 كل أنواع الأكل الدسم عم يكله في كل of calories no 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 I, I'm not sure if I should agree with CAK on this one. Like, I, I think I do. I want Dr. Food to live a long and healthy life. The healthier Dr. Food eats, the more videos he can make, the more content he can create for us to react to. So please, Dr. Food, follow uh, CAC's advice and eat a little bit healthier. The interns, thank you for this research. I like CAC. Noor, you had actually prepared a, an expose on Dr. Food, exposing the restaurants that he has worked at. And we're going to show that next week. I'm very excited to show that. It's going to be very funny. So uh, stay tuned to see that next week. Uh, interns, any final thoughts on CAC? All right. Enjoy your day. C-A-K. Squid Game is currently the most popular television show in Lebanon on Netflix. It is the most popular Netflix show globally. Everyone is watching it. This was a show that I got very excited to watch because I love, I really like Korean cinema. 
Um, it looked fun. And I felt like watching a show that everyone else was watching. Like, I missed the days of Game of Thrones when everyone would be watching the episode and then come Monday morning, everyone's talking about it, breaking it down. I felt like this was another one of those moments where, like, the show just captured the cultural zeitgeist. Everyone's watching it. Everyone's talking about it. So I wanted to watch it. And um, I'm gonna, we're going to give you guys some spoiler-free thoughts about a Squid Game. My overall thoughts. I really like the show. I think it's a lot of fun. I really like the, the... So what is the central premise for those of you who haven't watched it? Again, spoiler free. Squid Game is this show about like this very mysterious secretive organization that brings these people that are suffering from like a lot of debt. They are living under like crushing financial debt. They owe hundreds of millions of wands or like if not billions, these people are like in desperate need of money. So there's this organization that gives these people an opportunity to win a massive sum of money by playing in children's games. Weird games that they used to play when they were kids like uh, tug of war, uh, stuff like that. But there's a twist. There is a deadly twist to, the, to those games. People who play them can die. It can end up very violent. And um, that's, that's the central premise of the show. And I've got to say, I really, really enjoyed it. Now, there is one thing that I didn't really like was that it felt like overly Netflix like I don't like the people in the red jumpsuits with their masks I think that's kind of stupid I think there's a lot of subplots on the show that were kind of just added on there to to maybe stretch it out into a series to maybe add a couple of episodes um, it just there are some elements that I found very weak but the central the central premise the games and the main characters and the performances I thought were great I had I honestly had a very good time with it and no matter what I say in terms of complaints it kept me like on the edge of my seat I binge watched it every time I would finish an episode I would start the next one so on that end it succeeded I just think that the show did too much where it didn't really need to like I think the central premise is strong enough the idea of these people having to live together and play these games while trying to survive was strong enough I didn't feel like it needed a lot of that extra frivolous stuff that just felt like standard Netflix stuff like the, from the from the costumes and the branding of some stuff and and there's like this room with all these different colors and these walls and these weird stairs that didn't add anything to the show. It just felt like they were throwing so many ideas at the wall to see what would stick. But I felt like it, some of this stuff ended up distracting from what I think made the show great. There is one episode in particular, no spoilers, but it's the seventh episode, seventh episode. And they were introduced to these characters known as the VIPs. I do not remember when's the last time I cringed that hard watching a TV show from their performances. And I know they're, it's a Korean show. So like if they're, they're getting these D-list American actors and actors from like other countries, but they were incredibly bad. And the dialogue, like if their acting wasn't bad enough, the fucking dialogue that they gave him, like, I'm sorry, this isn't a spoiler, but like there was like seven jokes about 69 in there. Like, khalas, I get it. 69, sex, <laughs> hilarious. We don't need 12 jokes about that for 10 minutes with horrible fucking actors. Other than that, and other than those little nitpicks that I have, I think it's, it's a very fun show. If you haven't seen it yet, if you're one of the five people who have not watched Squid Game yet, I think you're going to enjoy it. Uh, interns, Nu, what did you think of Squid Game? Uh, I totally agree with all the cringe VIPs. I hated them. I hated them in all my Plus, I've seen many videos uh, on Instagram, like the show has very deep philosophical stuff uh, that I'm not going to talk about, Akib. Mm -hmm. But it's really great when you come to think about it. But uh, it's, it was really fun to watch. Would you recommend it? Uh, I would, yeah. Okay, awesome. Elijah? I started it today. It is definitely binge worthy. I'm at episode 7 to episodes left. I'll continue them most likely after this show. Uh, from what I've reached so far, show Tirando like this deep meaning of, and it's a representation on society in a way. Who oh, prepare yourself for an emotional roller coaster? Yeah. yeah, yeah. You guys make some good points. Like definitely, it poses some questions. Like how far are you willing to go for money? Uh, it, it brings us face to face with like our humanity. You know, like it's it, it's very it, it's very interesting. And yeah, there are some emotional moments. There's one episode in particular, one game in particular that just crushed me. There's also like the sweetest and the cutest old man, contestant number 001. I think it's safe to say everyone loves you. Uh, highly recommend it. And yeah, uh, it's got a lot of like, 
you, you can stop and think about it and you can really put yourself in their position. Like, what would I do? Those are the best kinds of shows that ask, that make you think, what would I do if I were in this situation? And this is one of those shows. Definitely watch it. We're about to record an extra segment exclusive for Patreon, where we're going to talk about a bunch of TV recommendations and movie recommendations. So if you're on Patreon, uh, look forward to that. Actually, there's one more fun fact that we forgot to mention. Uh, the writer of Squid Game actually wrote the show like in 2009 and has been trying to sell the show for 12 years. And he kept getting turned down and turned down and turned down until finally, I'm guessing, Netflix took the show. I'm curious as to, like, was his format the way it is now? Or did Netflix add some of its, like, Netflix elements that I, I kind of complain about, like the, the costumes and a lot of that stuff? It shows that persistence pays off. And if you have a story that you really believe in, you know, don't give up on it. Because eventually, look, look at him now. Like, he's literally the number one show in the fucking world. Folks, thank you so much for joining us for this action-packed episode 35 of Do Not Worry. I hope you guys had as much fun as we had recording it. Uh, before I let you guys go, let me say another quick thank you to some of our amazing patrons. Uh, Rudolph, thank you, my man. Wasim Hijazi, you're the man, my guy. Bilal Mughrabi, thank you. Joseph Sarkis, I salute you, sir. Uh, Ubay Nahas, thank you, my man. Uh, superhero patrons, Nadine Najla. Thank you so much. Ziad Ashar, you know who you are, my guy. Uh, Ahmad and Lamia, thank you. Rami Gharib, thank you, my man. And Ali Hijazi, thank you guys so much for supporting the show. As usual, please leave a like, uh, comment, you know, let us know. Engage with the video. Let us know if you had fun. Uh, feel free to recommend some topics. Remember, if you want to send any topics or any cringe videos uh, to the show, you can hit up uh, Do Not Worry on Instagram. The interns are going to be handling it. They're going to be looking over all of that stuff. So uh, please do not forget to do that. As I mentioned before, if you want to support us on Patreon, please do so. Your money goes directly into supporting uh, paying the interns and my Joseph Shada documentary. And you'll be getting you know, a bunch of exclusive content and stuff like that. So definitely do that. Um, on behalf of myself and Noor and Elijah, do not worry, folks. Do not worry.